Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I plan to work on the finishing of my um, pouch. So the plan was to actually gather a few things that were up at my new craft room at my house in Barham. I'm sort of traveling between two properties at the moment as we try and get one finished to live in and the Brisbane one finished ready for sale so you know tidy up ready for sale so it's going to take a few months so unfortunately i'm sort of sort of straddling between two craft rooms so and you can guarantee it the moment i need something it's at the other craft room so it's been quite a logistical challenge and as my husband said why are you taking all this back to brisbane it was sitting on the kitchen bench all loaded up and i said because i now need it all and it's here and everything else is down there and oh my goodness but anyway and the plan was while I was there for the week to film like I even took my iPad and everything to film the final video but I, I started crocheting and that was the end of that so I was working on my stash busting I had a girlfriend come up for the weekend and we just crocheted all weekend so it was lovely but anyway, as I raced back out the door, back to Brisbane, I just started grabbing bits and pieces that I knew I wanted to do, like this stuff just shoved into there. So first of all, the one thing I did get done up at um, Barham was the actual closure. Now this cordage is really old and I hope it doesn't disintegrate on me, but I just love it. It's come out of my grandmother's stash. I don't know what it's from. It is a bit you know when things start to get a bit old and they get a little bit crinkly so i thought i'm just going to use it and if it breaks down on me i can always replace it so i have stitched it very carefully into position here just love it it's got a real nice sheen about it now the piece i used a little bit inside which i'll show you and the rest out here and it's just going to wrap around and then I've attached to the end a key and I've stitched it it was a knot but because it's slippery and shiny I decided to stitch it now I was chatting to Susanna about a week and a half ago and we were discussing our closures and we we're like I wonder what the girls are going to do I wonder what everyone else is going to do and I said well I, I love the idea of a key and I'll use this and I'll attach it in here by just wrapping it under, but it can flip flop around a little bit. And she said, yeah, you're right, because I did that on my postcard holder when I got back from France. I had a key that I bought from Versailles and it's sort of themed um, Queen Antoinette. And Susanna said that she had bought a diary for her husband a leather diary and it too had a key to fasten it and he was quite chuffed with it because it had a little spot to the side where you can do this like a little pocket for the key and I thought how clever and he was finding it very easy to work with so I was looking at my embroidery getting ready to attach something and I realized I had put this on. So I ended up unpicking it, reinforcing my stitching either side and having that little gap. So now my little key just goes through here and it's not caught in here. It's not damaging this very old, um, uh, what, what trim, trim's the word I'm looking for. And it's not also damaging my embroidery that was here. So that's my closure and I thought well I'm going to go ahead and attach it and stitch everything where I want it to be and then that's done because I want to get stuck into inside so that's what I did while I was up at Barham which should have led to a video this video but it didn't because I then went crocheting now next thing I want to show you is in here I've got stuff as I raced out the door, picked up things and thought, oh, I'll use that, use that. So i just unpack a little bit here. Um, now, where did we get to? Concertina. This was the other thing I've ended up doing. Remember, I couldn't decide if I wanted to attach here because I really want the ability to have some storage componentry in here for sewing bits and bobs. So the other thing I did at Barham was I stitched a button on here 
and I've done that. I thought, well, that's going to give me the best of both worlds. It is attached, but not attached. So that really gives me the true concertina. Let me just go up a little bit in that camera. So I feel like I'm right up on it. So I can load up my pockets. That is attached. That's attached. That can be detached. And I've got my little tab here if I want to pull it open. So it's a case of you're heading out and you want to take some bits and bobs and you just fill it up with all of your bits and pieces. Okay, this is nice and long, so it should be able to get quite fat and still close. So really, really happy with so far where we're at. So there you go, concertina is finished. Now, let's get to the next fun bit. Unwrap it to open this space. So, now there was all sorts of bits and bobs that I grabbed as I went out the door. Bit of wool. Oh, um, needle book. This was made for the squishy back and it was slid into one of the pockets. Now, I'm thinking of doing one for here. Yes, it's getting bulky, but I don't know, I think carrying all my bits and pieces is a really good idea in the way of needles and scissors and things like that. So that's the plan for that. So I wanna make a little needle book. Now the other thing I'd love to add, if I can fit it, is this. Now let me grab, actually, hold that thought, I'm off, I'm off. This is my needle book. It would have to be one of my most viewed um, videos and it's just an eclectic has just been growing has a bit of everything in it little treasure so it is a slow stitch cover of a generous size let me tell you the size if you did want to make yourself one it's all well and good having these little needle books but I don't know I keep going back to this one that's a little bit bigger so I'm going to say six and a half inches by 12 decorate a panel and then when your panel's ready, put a lining through and I just use Calico and stitch it all together. So now you've got this panel of stitchery that has a lining going through. Then I started adding things like a pocket to hold all my needles. Oh, there's some good needles. I went hunting for needles too up at Barham. I just don't seem to have. So I bought these two back with me and of course my needle book. So now I'm restocked. Remember I keep saying, where's all my needles gone? Now I have needles. So once I had my little pocket stitched on, which is also embellished, just a rectangle, I then added a garment pin to hold additional tools. A little charm. I've got my needle threader and this little bag. And in this bag, it allows me to have bits and pieces um, loose. So I'd really like to include that somehow in my um, satchel. Let's say you have some buttons or some beads that you wanna take with the project, a little bag. Then you've got your needle book itself, which is, gosh, this thing has morphed too. When I originally made it, that was the needle book, this big guy. This is where all my needles are. This was the needle book insert. See, it's the size of the actual piece. Oh, those two. I just took a photo of those pair of glass. They were sitting there beside the window looking at me, watching me film. So I'll put it at the end of the video because I haven't shown you Pepper and Bandit for a while. So what was I saying? So this was the original piece, just one piece of felt folded in half, stitched in, decorative stitch. And I think I'd used a big enough piece of cotton that I anchored it here, went all the way around the outside just to make it look pretty. And then when I got to here, it became the anchoring thread. I might've done that first. I might've anchored it and then did a lap around the perimeter, all in one thread. Then it gets to the point where that's not enough space, is it? So I made an itty bitty one that was a little fancier, 
it's got flips, flaps, pockets, more flips and flaps, and also ties. So this little guy, still a single piece of felt, but more storage components, got stitched in right next to this guy, as in another signature. So my needle book just keeps expanding, and that's why I'm tending towards a six and a half by 12 inch base, because if it comes to a day where you want to pack more into it, you can, because you've got space. Now in the back, this is a scrappy heart, bits of fabric stitched onto a felt heart, this video series on how I did that, just using bits and bobs to uh, embellish it, slow stitch it, bead it, you name it. Then this holds my scissors in the back. And now the scissors, the button and the binding are attached. But this hides a press stud, which you just separate like so. And that comes out of there. And there's your little scissors ready to go. So I guess I'm showing you this because it's just full of a multitude of ideas, all of which I'm going to sort of think about and decide what goes into this. And the good thing is, is I know this works because I've had this for a couple of years now as my traveling needle book. So I'm pretty confident that if I stay close to this plan, oh, that was a gift that a lady gave me at a retreat um, she makes these beautiful, beautiful braided, plaited pieces. And I had it at my retreat and it just got stitched in there. So your needle book really can become a collection of treasures. Don't be afraid to pick up a needle and stitch more onto it down the track. So if you get a little piece of lace left over from a project, stitch it onto your needle book. I honestly think our needle books are a collection of where we're at in our stitching and also they grow with us. I, I just think they, they're nearly a time capsule. So that's, that's my thoughts on needle books. So let me just get back focused on going off. I get emotional when I touch it because I can see so many things in there that remind me of other things. Anyway, so when I make projects like this, I do what I can to try and get needle book um, capacity, I guess, added to it. Now, before we make decisions, this is just scraps that I took with me up to Barham, hoping that that would be enough to make something. Now, these were at Barham. Now, if you remember back, see, I've got a little bit of that left. Might be able to use that as a tie. I bought some tins from the retreat that I did with Forage. And inside was this little kit so ah here we go look a press stud used for a little needle book so very similar look at that gosh talk about great minds think see the concept of these things is pretty much the same it's how far you go with it or how simple you keep it so that one was for the squishy bag this one Pinking shears used to cut the fabric, which is not a bad idea too. If you've got an old pair of pinking shears, pull them out. So a split ring. That's a clever idea too. See, something like that could be stitched in somewhere so that you've got a spot to hold some threads. See, clever, clever. A um, little pair of scissors with this one. Another little one with a couple buttons on it. So purely decorative, but you know, not a bad idea. And then the little tape measure. And a little piece of Velcro I've used to wrap around it. I think I did something like this in a squishy bag where I stitched that down. And then the tape measure can be held into position inside the lining of the squishy bag. Where's my squishy bag? Okay, hang on a minute, guys. 
We're off on another tangent. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, all these projects cross over. Once you sort of start working on something, you find you revisit it. Okay, what have we got in here? So yeah, look, that's that's a binding, which is on the front here holding my key, straight down the inside of my squishy bag. And there's two needle books tucked in there. So you could have one for pins and one for needles. There's the um, tape measure. That's a long skinny pouch for um, pen. So my could go in there. So you might be able to work in a long skinny pouch to hold a pen, your friction pen. Here is the little bag scenario. Ah, oh, this is the scissor scenario. So this little embroidery was given to me by a lovely, lovely lady. Hello, you know who you are. She was at the retreat with me and she gave me a little embroidery and I've used it on this pocket. Now the principle with a button is you can close, not this scissors because you need a little indent there. I think it worked with my gold scissors. No, I don't have them with me. If you've got a pair of scissors where the metal kicks in here and there's a gap, you can close scissors around a shank of a button, which is another clever little idea that I spotted somewhere in my travels. But you need scissors that have a, a gap here for the shank to come through. And all these ones around me here don't. The gold ones fit in there. I think they're... I think they're beside my chair. So another idea for holding scissors and then just some little pockets to hold threads. So all ideas that you can add into your um, pouch if you're going to add notions to your pouch. So let's pack that away. No, they might end up being stitched into something one day. They match beautifully to this. And then there was a blue tin with a bunny on it, and that was the little pack that come with the blue one. So gorgeous. Now, put the scissors back, girl. So let's have a look at the pouch and see what we can put together. We have available to us this space as well as this and it might be a case so i packed in a garment pin and a button as well so the button is used to fix it i think i need to decide where my scissors are going and in my last video i was playing with this there because we've got a fold happening and we'll have scissors in the way won't we I need those scissors back don't think that'll work because we've got a fold so this would have to go like that and the scissors would come through like that but I would still need a little fastening scenario like this guy otherwise the scissors will just shoot out like that so that's a definite that would get rid of those and give me space for potentially that there for bits and bobs and then that there yeah I like that what else would I need to consider? I don't need a tape measure. And worst case, it could be slid into a pocket. Yeah. Okay, I think I've just made a decision. Heaven forbid. So this... will be stitched there. So just with some invisible stitch and then I'll need to find that's just a piece of crocheting off of a doily 
in the corner. So as the corner, I think it needs to be lifted a little bit because that's going to crash into that fold there. And I'm going to stitch it down, like be really, I'm going to come right in there. So all of that is stitched, that V. That way it's just got a tiny little spot to slip into. It's the perfect size for these particular scissors. So I think these scissors are going to stay with this pouch now. So that's part of my homework now to stitch that in position. And I need to find something. Did I pack anything? So these were the threads that I took with me. As I envisioned my... I did consider this as my um, uh, tie as well. This is like a canvas... Um, a canvas tape. And I just cut a piece off as I raced out the door and I had visions of stitching it in and that would be the tie. And I thought, well, no, that's a bit too thick. So then I was going to do that and then lay that over it because this was a braid that I got in France. And I thought, no, that's still a little bit too thick for what I wanted. And then I found that as I raced out the door. And I guess if this fails on me in the future, I can always do something else. And then I see Sarah's idea of stitching um, bits and pieces onto a, um, a base is just lovely. So I picked up this canvas tie at Sewing Lair and I thought, when will I ever use it? And it was negligible in price. So it would be good for those snippet roll pieces that um, Sarah was playing with as a base because it doesn't fray and yeah so anyway another day another rainy day we'll dig that out and have a play so i think that's pretty good i've just got to find something to do that and a press stud and if there's anything in my box of tricks here that we could utilize I like these little braids, these little cloth ribbons because they've got a sealed edge. I would have got this from a cheap shop or spotlight. I think I'm going to use that. Okay, so I'll need a little button to secure it there. And then the press stud scenario goes on there. And then I think on top of the press stud to hide the fact that there's a press stud, I stitched a little little flower. So we need a little flower. Cut that off. I'm going to need that. I'll have to go further afoot to find press studs. But in here, it'd have to be a random, here we go, here they are. A random flower, but there's one by itself. There's a beauty. I'm always one flower short, you know, left over, and I throw it in. But do I find it when I need it? No, I then go and cut off. Here's a pink one. That'll work. It picks up the pink that's over there. All right, finally I use that one random flower without cutting off another. So that's the plan. That will be stitched there. Button, snap flower on top okay so where's my little working tray that in there that in there that in there okay so we've decided all of that I might even look at finding something to put there just to finish that It'll be something here I'll find something look I've just spotted something it's half a motif Oh, yeah, look at that. Just glanced across to the mess of my table and you find another little element. So that I always try and tidy up, but sometimes I wonder if it 
inhibits my creativity by having a mess. I don't need two pins, that's not going anywhere. All right, so scissors have a home. Let's go back down here. I think I will just stitch this into position with the button to hold it. And I might even put a couple little X's here because I don't want that swinging out. So I think I might just, I've got some thread here attached. Not enough, wishful thinking. I like the fact too that this, I can see my fabric behind because that was a concern and I nearly, nearly stitched that. And I thought, no, just wait, you'll probably end up covering it. <clears throat> so happy about that. So all I'm going to do is slide my needle in between those layers so that you can't see. See what I'm doing with the knot. I'm just going to come up. I could do it in the middle. Let's do it in the middle. Then I don't have to do one X. And I don't have to try and make two X's look like they sort of match. Degree of difficulty is high. Okay. Just a little cross, purely to hold that down. And then I'm gonna come back through all those layers with my needle, just to stop it swinging. Finish that off. So that's now I got a home. I haven't even asked how you're all going. I hope you're all good. I hope you're all busy stitching. We've come to the end of this little project. It's been a cracker. It's been great fun. So now I think we'll put the button up high. I might pop a pin here because it's slipping around a bit just to hold it. my little knot because she's a bit of a horse tail knot okay gosh there's January gone guys oh my goodness so I'm just going to do two little stitches just to anchor it and then I can sew my button on which side will I use oh I like that it's got a little bit of pink If I was clever, I'd do some button art. I'd do some stitching within the stitching of the button down. Have you seen them on TikTok? Oh my goodness. I visited a few op shops up at uh, Harvey Bay too. Nothing brilliant come out of it. Not, a, not even enough to, what am I doing? Concentrate. <laughs> Can you see what I did wrong? I'm stitching the button down, but I haven't caught the bag. My goodness. Too busy chatting to you guys. Okay, so let's just back it up a, sec a second. Yeah, didn't find anything brilliant. And anything that was really cool... I sort of have already and I'm like, I don't need another of that. You know what I mean? So I'm being quite refrained. I don't know why. Usually not. But sort of, I don't know, maybe packing up my craft room and moving it to a degree has given me a good look at what I actually have. And when I started the channel and got back into sewing, I was on the hunt always for, you know, supplies. But now I sort of feel like I've settled and got a bit of everything, enough to keep me with access to something. 
And then if I do come up with a project that I need something in particular, well, I'll go looking for it. But so far, I don't know, I seem to have enough. So I'm not too phased. I was a bit shocked at what I didn't find in the Brisbane stores. And I guess I've thought about it a little bit and going, well, technically you don't need a lot. And then when I went to the Harvey Bay stores, wasn't much there. And what I did find, I already had. So... I guess now my brief when I'm shopping because I tend to give myself um, a color palette or a, a theme so that I don't just go crazy and buy everything um, I think the brief now will be just something a bit special or it's a project for you guys if I see something that inspires me then I'll, I'll buy it because I seriously have enough stuff so that should be secure. Just need to knot it off now. And with the little X at the bottom, that's not gonna swing around and get in my way or hang out of the pouch. I think it'll be quite secure. That'll be good. Knotted. So one little pouch. So that's just a little organza bag. I pick them up at the cheap shops. They usually get five for a couple dollars. You can usually get white or off-white and pinks. So now that little guy can hold, you know, notions or whatever. They can just sit there like that. Okay, next is the needle book. Now, what did I, maybe I'll put this out of the way. So I grab some wadding, another piece, scraps of fabric, some calico, and a couple little morsels. So how big do we want it? There's this one, and then there's this one. I suppose we could be a decent size, but do we need it that big? And then that's their sample. That probably visually looks better, doesn't it? I think I'm going to use this as my template. Like as big as I'd like it to be, I probably don't need it that big. So let's get some wadding sorted first. Now I get to do another slow stitch piece. Because you know how it is. It just turns into bigger than Ben-Hur. I'll use that there as my tie point And with a little button. So I'll put that in the little tray. I now need two extra buttons. So we've got our wadding. Got some calico here and we've got some fabric. So that'll be my internal. No, what am I doing here? How are we going to do this? Are we going to use. Did I put wadding in that? Yeah, I did. Just thinking. Yeah, we'll, we'll carry on. And we'll use that other piece to be the internal. Right, okay, I'm with it now. I was just thinking, what am I actually doing here? I'm going to bring this down to size. So that now is my base on which I put pretty bits which is where all this comes in. I'll just bring it back from the edge. So I've got that big bit. The doggy and the fire and the man missing his head. Or this floral at the bottom. It's the same, that's the same. Don't know if I want doggy with his master. I think that was lying on my desk after I finished filming 
and I just started throwing everything into a project box so that when I got to Burham, I had, um, you know, bits and bobs. And I haven't even got enough bits and bobs, seriously. How, well, how did I think I was going to pull this off? Okay. Just looking at the cover to see what it looked like. All right. I need more fabric, guys. Let me put that out of the way. This we'll use for the internal to hold the needles. Now that I'm back home, I might even go looking for some felt. That's less bulk. This is quite, this is like a cotton wadding from making quilts. So I might even trade that back out and just put a little piece of felt in there. That's cotton wadding, that's cotton wadding. So I might pop them in my drawer and look more for cotton felt. There'll be something in there. Oh, here's a white piece. Oh, it's so white. Uh, I'll go digging further. Now, calico scrap, we don't need that. Are we going to use this? I think we should use it. But not the doggy. No, can't use it. Why am I hoarding stuff? So, I need my French fabrics. Where are they? Got scrappy fabrics here actually. A stripe, not French. That's French. That's French. That's French general. I've got lots of little flowery bits, don't I? Maybe I'll make it a bit more neutral. Just bear with me as I fiddle around. It's a fun bit, isn't it? I've just got my box of neutrals, scrappy bits. I like that red fabric. Doggy's gone. Problem is it's getting thick, as in bulky. I like that. And I like all these little flowers, these things. But I need something to go over there. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. and then pop some lace in. Okay, we've got a plan, guys. That was reasonably simple. Let's just get a very simple base done. A little bit of red. Pull it in a little bit from the edge of the piece. It'll come together. So I've got my calico. I've got my wadding to make the little needle book feel lovely, you know, in your fingers. So we're just working on the cover. Um, and I don't think we'll need that. We'll pop this neutral piece down because I just like the look of that. But that can go away. Probably don't need all of that fabric, so I'm going to steal a little bit back and put it in my scrap bucket. No use using it underneath something. And that goes there. And we might bring that up to there just so that it doesn't line up and that then gives me an excuse to put something there back into the bucket see there's some more it's like going shopping isn't it that color will work because it is on my and so will this color but that's stitched it down so don't be wasting good stuff girl okay this is actually stitched, so I'm not going to worry about that. Why put a treasure there 
because that's what I'm actually going to see that stitched down. So I'm not going to do any more than that. And I need pins. Happy with that. I could even be a bit miserly. Should I do it? It'll be less bulk. No, I can't do it. What if I don't stitch it down? Like, I can't do it. I was going to cut there and there to take that. But I can't do it. <laughs> All right. Let's get some invisible stitching done. Needle and thread. I'm going to just camphor stitch it straight away. Saves time, doesn't it? So I wonder what the girls have got planned for us for next month. It's exciting, isn't it? I was, love those buttons that... Um, Rachel did. Very clever. I can see them in my future somewhere. As long as I remember, like, you see all these great ideas and then it's like, oh, forgot that. I think I will do a straight running stitch for a start through the border of this guy. And that'll hold, hold that into position. I could probably find a needle that's a little bit sharper and I wouldn't have so much pushback on my fingers. But anyway. I think too by having this wadding on the inside of this, I then potentially can use this to stick pins and needles into as well and it won't be coming through to the front so with the little booklet the this bit gets full I've got this nice and wadded up that I can use it as well now you could if you wanted to put on your lining fabric now and stitch through the whole thing no reason why I couldn't do that. But I might go further afoot and find a pretty fabric to go there on the inside. A last little, oh, look at that moment when I open it, especially if I find one of those little French ones that can go, gee, that's a bit of a crooked stitch. It shouldn't bother you because it's slow stitch, girl, but some stitches, they just look bad. <laughs> you just have to undo it. If you don't like it, unpick it. It'll only bug you. Every time you open this little thing up, you'll be like, oh, there's that stitch. I should have, should have unpicked it. Okay. So I might even dig out some of those reds in the cotton and that plain piece of fabric there do some running stitch in red and get everything stitched down any camphor stitching boro stitching you know running stitches that I want to do that's all going to be done first then I can have a look at these little morsels and decide what's the feature and also it gives you a chance that if 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 you finish that first step and you just love what you're looking at well maybe an embellishment just trimming that back a bit maybe an embellishment's not even needed but you know me so it's pretty isn't it simple get a bit of stitching in see i've got in the little tray i packed some threads so I could even do a little bit of that type of stitching. And then I guess it comes down to, well, what's the embellishment? You know, to me, I love that at the beginning. 
but I'm now thinking that's too big and too precious and I want to hoard it. <laughs> okay, that's gone. Back to this one. Probably a better size, but then I'd lose my stripes. Nibble that little bit out there. That might be better. Like just cut that out there. Um, they have got a French feel about them, but they're not the French fabric. So let's just put them away because they've sort of snuck in. That's French general, so put it away. Let's stay true to the whole concept of the project, celebrating my time in my trip to France. Let's have a look at the pouch in position because maybe that will actually decide what I do. I think this is the flower and I think I fussy cut it out. But I'd love to tear it out, but it's so delicate. I think it would just disintegrate. But I can fluff it up a bit. And I put that on there. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll use a bit of that tie. There's my little box. We'll use that tie around a little button. So it's still delicate, I feel, to secure it into position. And then inside, we need something for inside. Come back to the little doggy. That would solve the man problem with his head missing, wouldn't it? I love those threads hanging out there. See, it was turned over and stitched. It was like it was a pocket or something. I don't know, it was a scrap that was caught up in some fabric. See, I could do that there and we have little doggy. The only comment is if I go and use this as a needle, oh yeah, that's pretty fine fabric. So we cut the man off. We have little doggy. I'm going to cut the man off. You guys are probably horrified out there, but I'd rather have the doggy than a man with his head in half. So I've got a pretty piece of fabric now, and this will fold. So am I wasting a great image? But I would like to open that up and see a little dog. It's a nice scrappy. A, a fire? No, no real connection to that, but I could. I could add that. That's got a lovely little edge. See how there's some black stitching there? Maybe I find a home. It's look like look at the size. Oh, I know. What if we, what if we fold that? It's a shame to cover that. It's a shame to cut that. What if we fold that and stitch that down? Oh, here, here we go. All right, move that out of the way. The girl's got an idea. 
that goes in there. So this will all happen once the front's finished. This is me planning the inside now. We pretend that that's stitched down. There's a needle and thread. I'm just gonna do it. But, um, goodness sakes, lost my needle. Oh, you see, it. here it is. Oh my goodness me. So what I'm going to do is create an additional flap for something to be pinned into. So this has just given me a whole new idea for another project, for a needlebook project. Let's pin that there. And there, so we've got our doggy, we've got our fireplace. So we haven't lost the integrity of that image. And we now, when we fold that there, we assume that that's there. Yep, I want that rough edge hanging down because I love that. I want to see the knot as another decorative feature. And we're going to run a little stitch through here to attach that. And then once my front is all stitched down and my little flower motif that I've decided on, this little guy is stitched down. And of course there'll be thread painting and oh, it'll turn into a palaver. It always does. We will then have a little flap at the back of the needlebook as well. You're probably sitting there going, I don't know. I don't, don't see what she's doing here. I'm just going to do the knot on the top. So it too is a little decorative. So it's looking a little bit more like a child's made. <laughs> a child's made this needle book. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> Primitive stitching. Okay, so that's my lining and that will be stitched into here. I'll make sure that that gorgeous little edge is hanging out because you know, you just gotta have that. And I will have this so that it's flapping and let's assume that we've now shot forward in time and this is all now attached. I'll probably do a white running stitch around it, a white running stitch there. So it'll all be, you know, attached. And then things like, for example, a garment pin could be on here to hold some little beads for a project. So that's there to hold something. It will also hold some additional pins for a project, whatever. It's just given us another page within our little needlebook scenario. So then I'll stitch in a piece of felt. How are we going for time? Oh, look, how do we do this? This goes the time. Um, I'm looking for a piece of, I think I will just use, use that wadding. It's so nice and it buries pins really well. So how big does it need to be? Not that big. I just need a little, a little morsel. Just somewhere to hold that. So no measuring. I haven't got time for measuring. And every time I measure, it's never right anyway, because I then have to do mathematics. And that's just fraught with danger. So this, I will running stitch around it in red, most likely running stitch through here and at the same time I do that it will attach it and that will be my internal needle holder 
Then I've got this little guy as a little extra, and that will all sit in there. Oh, you beautiful little thing. That will be stitched on there because I won't be able to help myself. I then will have a button for this to wind around, and that will be buried into the seam of it all. And there we go. We have a little needle book that has got so bulky and thick it's probably going to be trouble this end, but who cares? I'm all about the notions and not the actual project that's in the bag. So if that then is here, I probably do need to find a felt for that inside pocket just to take a bit of bulk out, but we'll see. Yeah, but I do love that. And then that goes up to there. We can secure it closed. Scissors are there. That's there. And then in the pocket, we've got our little English paper piecing project or just a, a piece of embroidery. Even if it's just accessories for a bigger project and you've got your toolkit with you and it's just full of, you know, little morsels that goes on to another project. It's definitely got at least a lot of um, use and it carries your tools. Yeah, I love it. So how are we going for time? 56 minutes of figuring out. Okay, what I will do is pause the video and I will head off into the sunset and stitch this little guy together in everything that we've discussed. I need a button for that. That's completed. I need to stitch this down and find a button for that and stitch that down. And then I will be back because I believe the project will be completed. So, all right, excellent. Thanks guys for hanging with me while we nut all that out. Um, I will dodge off, do a bit of stitching and I'll come back at the end of this video in a few seconds and show you, you know, the finished project. I'll also add to the um, video the pictures of Pepper and Bandit that I took before I started filming. It's pretty blooming cute. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Back, well, no, I'm not saying goodbye. I'll be back in a minute.